to All About The Bass with myself, Lee, and I'm Flea, no I'm not, I'm Nathan, <laughs> and we thought we'd start this particular little uh, bass segment, uh, I thought that, with, um, with an homage, with something that I don't know, <laughs> with an homage to a, to a classic kind of uh, Stingray bass player, uh, because we don't have a Stingray bass, I, I, I've forgotten the link now, but we have a bass that we think is perhaps trying to sort of uh, yes. pay some homage to uh, yeah. to that bass. So what have we got here? Uh, this is the Fender Dimension bass. Take me to another dimension. Um, four string. Four string. Five string. Mm. Yeah, so uh, cool. I, I, I think you're right. I think this is kind of their version of a Stingray. Yes. So you know, I, two big humbuckers. That's basically what we're looking at sound-wise. You know? so, so I think the history here is that over the years, Fender have uh, never really moved away from the P bass and the jazz bass. You know, they've done deluxe versions of those. They've done five-string versions of those. But fundamentally, that the, the you know the, the they've never really departed from that body style and that basic look mm -hmm. until uh, Dimension Bass came out, which is a you know, five, six year old design. A third dimension, if you will. Yep. Comes in both a two humbucker and a single humbucker version. Um, I don't know visually if it's really going for the Stingray thing. I mean, I think it probably is a bit, but in terms of spec and uh, vibe, it's very Stingray-esque. Yep. Uh, now, the reason we're doing this bass video is because we have a rather fantabulous offer on these basses at the moment, big discount. And I've got to say, I think there's a, there's a certain element that says, look, whenever a brand that's famous for doing one thing tries to emulate a brand that's famous for doing something different, mm -hmm. it never really goes down that great. You know, it's like, I remember when Fender did the Elite, which was kind of their version almost of a sort of a Les Pauli vibe, or when Gibson have done Super Strats and, mm. you know, it's just like, look guys, stick to what you're good at, I think is the... <laughs> People say that to me all the time. Um, so what we've ended up with uh, on the Dimension Base uh, is uh, an offer where there's about 30, 40, and my maths are rubbish. So these should be about- Loads, there's loads off. They, they, these should be about 1,600 quid each because mm -hmm. they're full American and we'll go for the spec in a minute, but they're not. They're like 950 um, and, and 999 and uh, beautiful cases and all kinds of gubbins with so it. So this is not a thinly disguised advert. This is a, just an advert. This is purely, this is an advert. This is, please buy these bases because they're on a great offer. And I bought about, 40 or 50 of them. So we've got lots of different colors. Um, you know, we've got various rosewood and maple fret options. But you know, uh, so I'll put the link in the description below that the longer this video stays up, obviously the, the less we'll have less, less we'll have left, I should say. So it may well be that you click on the, the link below and there's nothing left, but hey. Hurry while stocks last. What can I say? Um, so let's go through the spec and let's talk about how, you know, what, what you get when you, because what you do get, I, I should say, for, for my criticism about, look, stick to what you know and all that kind of yeah. stuff, that's nothing to do with the quality of the instrument. No, no, no. That's purely and simply to do with the sort of the, I guess, the, the, the feeling that, you know, it's like if someone wants a jazz bass, they'll go and buy a jazz bass. If someone wants a Stingray, they'll probably go and buy a Stingray. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about what you got. Okay, uh, well I suppose the first thing to look at is our controls. Um, now, th this is just a little stuck on thing. You, you, this doesn't come with this. This That's peels right. off, it's a bit of plastic. But it helps us who have dementia to remember what it does. So, uh, master is it, volume. Is this the dementia base? The <laughs> dementia <laughs> base? Is yes. Uh, hello, where are we again? I don't know. Who are you? I, uh, What's that? I can't remember. Hmm? Uh, so, hello, where are we again? <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you have? I'm sticking with it. Uh, with master volume, that's very straightforward, and then uh, three band EQ, 
Uh, now this is a 18 volt um, active circuit, and uh, so with the uh, with all the you know the treble mid and bass, you've got cut and boost on it as well. So it's it's flexible. Uh, you know, it's a lot more flexible than a passive basis. Absolutely. Okay. And then uh, you've got these two humbucking pickups, which are controlled with a five-way switch. Um, and I'll go through the what it does in the in the different five positions. Uh, in the back position, it's the back pickup as you would expect, full on. Uh, in position two, it is the inner coils uh, of the uh, of the back and front pickup. And then middle position is both uh, pickups on flat out. Position four is the outer coils uh, of both pickups. And then position five is the front pickup, just flat out, you know, full, uh, full humbucker mug. We so, like. Uh, yeah, so it gives you lots of different uh, sounds, lots of different tones. Should we go through those now before we move on and talk about other spec? Sure. Cool. So uh, amp-wise, we're using the very capable little, uh, little Mark Ninja thing, the green thing, which we've uh, done another video on, so if you're liking uh, what you th what you can hear on the amplifier, go find that video on the All About The Bass channel. Uh, actually, it's not the All About The Bass channel at all, is it? It's the Anderton's channel, and this is the All About The Bass playlist. I should know that. I invented it. <laughs> sort of hair. <laughs> right then. So, uh, pickups? Yeah, let's do I'll the times. I'll play, and you do something. Oh, goodness me. I'm, yeah, it's good. It's let's good. do you this do, then. Come on, earn your key. Uh, absolutely, come on. So we're going to start off with the uh, just the bank position. Yeah. See how that sounds, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to play what you started playing. Uh, Lee was having a little jam before we started, I did. so in homage to him, I'm going to play that. Go on. Then. Amazing how much brighter the single coil settings are than the humbucker settings. Mm. Masses, masses more top end, and uh, not. I mean, it's funny because obviously as a guitar player, I, this exact switching system is kind of what you get on a two humbucker PRS guitar. Um, so I don't know whether they've kind of copied it from that kind of thinking, but it works great. You get low. I mean, without even touching the EQ, <coughs> heaps and heaps of different tones. Mm. So let's just let's put it on the let's just put it on the bridge pickup, bridge okay. humbucker, yep. and do the same, but maybe a different riff. And I'll just fiddle with the EQ. You can get an idea of kind of how powerful that is. A different riff. Now I've got to do the same riff. All right, for we'll control do, purposes. For control purposes, and wear a white coat yeah. as well. And I'm very lazy. Go on then, do I'm it. Imaginative. So between the two, between the, the active EQ and the five-way uh, switch on the on the humbuckers, tons and tons of different tones. Uh, I guess to suit every genre that there is, it, it kind of isn't that the sort of idea I think with the dimension base. It's to be that kind of do a bit of everything. Yeah, I, I think that's definitely the case. Yeah, of course with your active circuit, it always gives you you know the the maximum tonal yeah. flexibility. So let's talk about the feel of the bass, because that's quite interesting. Um, yep. They're both these solid lumps of, of ash, um, you know, beautiful range of, of colours here, but the, the natural one is probably the easiest one to sort of see the beautiful grain that you get. Um, a maple neck uh, with a choice of either a rosewood or a, a maple fingerboard. And again, one of the things that they take, uh, which they've sort of copied from the deluxe strats is the headstock is lacquered to give it that sort of classic posh kind of shiny look, uh, but the neck and the fretboard 
are matte. So what you'll notice, you probably can't see on here, but it's... Oiled and rubbed. Yeah, oiled and rubbed I on believe. the back. So, so not shiny on the back, shiny on the front, but only on the headstock, uh, which I think is generally what sort of players prefer. Um, although I guess that's all personal choice, isn't it? Um, no, I think, yeah, it's nice. Because, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, maybe some people like a, a varnished uh, neck, but it's, it can't, it's not my cup of tea. No, I, I, don't mind, I don't mind the old varnish, like the sort of the nitro varnishes, because they do wear quite quickly. But mm. modern, heavily lacquered necks, I think, are just sticky, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Um, now, we've got a kind of couple of features again, which you've seen on electric guitars recently as far as I'm aware, less so on, on bass guitars. And I'm interested in your opinion, Nath, as, as to kind of like, does it, does it change the feel as much as it might do on an electric guitar? And that's that we have an asymmetrical neck carve on the back. So that means it's a little bit more rounded by the thumb and a little bit flatter by the fingers. And we have a compound radius fretboard on the top, which means it's a little bit more curved down at the, um, the, the sort of, you know, the lower end. And it gets progressively flatter as it moves to the to the top ends, which, you know, if electric guitar players will tell you that it's kind of, you know, nice and comfy for chords here, and you can get the action a little bit lower for your sort of lead stuff up here without it choking off. I, I'm not entirely convinced uh, how a bass player sees the same benefits as that. So really it's kind of, you know, if you were playing, I don't know if you're one of these guys where, you know, you venture up above the 12th fret periodically. Oh, the you, dusty end? The dusty end, yeah. Give us, you know, do some stuff like that and then kind of go, oh, do you know what? This kind of, yeah, I can feel that or no, I can't feel it at all, <laughs> you know. Uh, okay. <clears throat> I can't really feel a massive difference, but... Do you ever venture up there anyway? Uh, no. <laughs> yes, rarely, rarely, rarely uh, if ever. No, it's frowned upon, quite frankly, <laughs> by everybody else in the band, so just leave it. Leave it. No, occasionally, yeah, occasionally you do. Yeah. Sometimes you get a little off the leash. Yeah. And then people, you know, for the next six gigs, then, oh, well, don't let them do that again. Sw swap over to the to the, the five string, because yeah. I'm, I'm kind of interested to just hear... Not hear, sorry. But I'm interested to know... Uh, I always feel in these videos, it's 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 very it's quite easy for us to get across how something sounds, but it's quite difficult to get across how something feels. So you've re you know give people some, just try and give people some guidance about, you know, does it feel similar to another bass that you've played? Does it feel easy, difficult? You know, all that kind of just whatever. Yeah, it it, it feels it's got its own kind of feel. Yeah, this uh, you know obviously just going over the five. Uh, naturally, you know, it's got a wider neck on it. Um, that's kind of obvious. But then, you know, you get used to that very quickly. So that's uh, that's not a big deal, really. Uh, Would you say it's one of those... I mean, looking at it visually, it looks on the narrow side for a five-string. You know, you, I see some of those sort of, you know, Yamaha TRB-style basses yeah. where, it, where it looks wider here. I mean, th mm. this to me looks very much like you know, a P-Bass profile. I, I, to be honest with, with you, I think it's kind of in the middle. Uh, it's in the middle sort of spectrum. You know, I've played fives that are narrower. Mm -hmm. I've certainly played fives that are wider. So it's, it's somewhere in the middle. It's somewhere nice, in the middle. Yeah, how about that? No, that's fine. That's cool. Um, Spec-wise, again, we've got this sort of very popular kind of what we're calling these high-mass bridges, which are basically just a great big lump of metal that they wang on the end. Uh, and that's designed to sort of, you know, give as much kind of you know, metal to wood kind of connectivity and sort of tone and sustain. Yeah. Um, it's not a string through body, it's a string through, at least I don't think it is, no, it's no. a string through bridge. Yeah. Um, but cast. Cast. So not a bent bit of tin. No, <laughs> right. As I've learned. Graphite uh, reinforced uh, truss rod or neck with, with, with an easy access truss rod. I kind of... Uh, I much prefer guitars that have this access truss rod. You know, I, I hate the guitars where you have to take the neck off to do the adjustment. Well, that's a, that's a nightmare. Neck yeah. off. Yeah, that's old old guitars. I think old guitars. Right. But even the ones where the where the truss rod adjustment is is here or just underneath it, you've well, got to have the right tool. Well, that, this is the thing. Stuff. You know, I think if you know if it, if you need a specific size Allen key, you can be guaranteed you can never find it. You mm. know, if you need it in a hurry, these are kind of cool actually because just about anything 
any, uh, anything small, small and, screwdriver. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, or, or kind of any size Allen key. You can shove in there and just, it's like a paddle wheel almost. Yeah. You just kind of wrench it round or off. And uh, that is kind of good. I like that. Mm. Uh, and graphite, uh, you know, what do they call them? Reinforcement rods. Yeah. Truss, I know them as truss rods, but I guess it's the same thing. I think, you know, bass, bass, bass players will know, won't they, even more so than electric guitar players, that, you know, you, the necks are susceptible to movement. Um, particularly, yeah. you, you just need the smallest change in conditions for the neck to go. Yeah, that's right. Um, so having the graphite reinforced uh, truss rod is going to, you know, hopefully keep the neck more stable whilst you're touring. Mm. Um, I like them. You know, it's it's like, oh, do I like them? I kind of, I'm, I, I, I think the the difficulty with a new body shape is it takes a while to just become classic and accepted. Of course. Um, but I don't think they've gone too out there. I mean, in actual fact, it's it looks ergonomically quite sensible in the sense of it's not too big, balance is good. It feels nice. Um, uh, weight's good. Yeah, and you always know. I mean, these are American made, so you always know with American fenders that you know the, the attention to detail and the quality is always very high. Um, look, let's let's get some more crazy five string tones. Um, I'm kind of thinking that we've probably told everybody everything they need to know about this, haven't we? Well, I think so. You know, there might be some specky things that people are interested in. You've got like a five bolt. Uh, thing on the neck there. A five bolt thing on the neck. Yeah. With a really handy, don't you just love living in the EU where we have to have stickers on the back of, uh, you know, really expensive <laughs> instruments saying, don't put this in the dustbin. As if anybody would I think anyway. They, I think they're talking about the battery. Well, this, well I don't know. It's EU. Nobody's going to put the base in the dustbin, are they? We Your girlfriend in. might. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've seen it done. Right, come on. Let's uh, let's get some crazy five-string stuff. I don't care what you do now. You can slap it. You can you can pick it. You can yeah, do a bit of pick, whatever so you want to do. Um, but I think we should sign out here. This okay. appropriate point. All right, cool. Well, look. Thanks again for watching All About the Bass. Hope you've enjoyed this little demo of the rather marvellous Fender Dimension Bass or Dementia Bass, as I prefer it. I, that's my really my new favourite. <laughs> my new name. I've been the captain. I've been Nathan, and we'll see you next time, and we're going to play out with something funky. Are we? I don't know. You're, All right. you're the player. I'm going to play with the pick, actually, and we'll see what happens. Do, do you it. want to fill them out with this while I'm doing it? If you want. Yeah, go on, go then. On, then. Let's do see it. what happens. Ah.